Venus left after her job was done. She wasn't interested in making a grand show, and I wasn't interested in telling the others about what happened. Well, except for Bummon and Sweetheart at our sessions. I hate to admit it. I really hate to admit it. But they've done me and my friends a lot of good. I wonder how much Sakura has figured out. She was a mere Twilight admired for her insight. A few hundred thousand scootaloos running around was wanting to raise flags in her head as much as it had Spitfires. Not to mention Fluttershy being a villain, R being sane nightmares, a demi chronic was Fluttershy claiming to be her daughter, and everything going on with Starlight's herd. But Sakura hadn't asked questions since the fighting ended. She's either waiting for Starlight's answers, she's figured it out herself, or she's just decided to roll with all the nonsense. The fake sun and moon still rose and set, even with the gaping hole in the sky. It's funny, I keep calling this invitation fake, but once upon as being living here, it'll be real. Squid stuck around for a bit, getting a feel for things before we got started. No moon and sun I could make will hold to Sally and Lulu's work, but these ones will do until they can make proper ones. That made me wonder. Are my friends going to be the only concepts for this new universe? Or were we going to be the oldest sisters of a whole lot of baby concepts? I guess a few million years of babysitting made for a pretty good punishment. Discord agreed, but offered up some of the baby supplies for amazing rancor his parents sorted in his realm. And then he gave us a rather odd request. I know you didn't take any sea ponies to populate this place, but eventually the universe will catch up and new souls will fill roles. Do you think I could make a sky ocean in the new world? As a natural part of creation? It's the only truly beautiful thing I've ever made that I didn't ruin. The only thing I ever made that really added to the world. As Nightmares didn't object to it, neither did Razru. She just said it'd have to be out of the way enough that Ponykind would discover it themselves, or else it'd be too big an addition for the mortals being ported over. Discord was fine with it. It was about the one thing I liked about Discord's kingdom too, Melody said. Why? Flutter Nice asked. Because you weren't forced to take ponies away from their families? Melody laughed. Kid, I told you a million times, we're just volunteering for this mission. I do part-time work as an angel of music, but most of my time is spent hanging with my family in Elysium. Pinky, Razaru, and Twinklebush have been spending time reminiscing about the Age of Dreams. They both treat Starlight a bit like royalty, funnily enough, though with Raz it's more subdued. Starlight, in turn, gives Zakora the same reverence Twilight always gave Celestia. Razaru and her star friend took to putting on magic shows for the scoots in their spare time. Here I thought that was supposed to be demeaning for the top magic users. Then again, Celestia had made a holiday just for playing the role of a clown in front of her subjects. It was fun, but I never got why she did it. I've got a good idea now, though. As for me, I'm watching over the Scootaloos waiting for their turns for guidance counseling. And let me tell you, trying to keep an eye on this many fillies at a time is a headache and a half. My Scootaloo, the first one, along with a dozen or so of her sisters, are talking with Razaru right now. The others are all from world lines where the Crusaders managed to stay together until they died. I don't bother trying to tune in to hear what they're talking about. I am sick of finding out my best friend is this other mare's second incarnation's big sister's imaginary friend fused with two other ponies twice removed from another timeline or some horse apples like that. My life is convoluted enough as it is. Celestia, I hope I can get rid of most of this horse apples in the new universe. Naturally, this universe chose then to give me the middle feather. Excuse me. Clover gently trotted up to me, not coming up from behind like every other pony here. She'd taken off her wings and didn't have her sword with her. She was just a teenage filly now. What's up? I... I just wanted to say that, well, she inhaled deeply. I never became Minty. That was another Clover who did that. But that Minty did become Twilight Sparkle, and, well, I don't want you to think I was keeping anything from you. You're all friends of my family, and most of my friends are related to yours, and I don't want us finishing things on bad terms. Even if we're 2,000 years apart, we're still family, and family should support each other. So, please, can't we be friends? And there she was. Neither a high and mighty angel nor a shrewd manipulator. All I saw was an awkward mare trying to bridge a gap. I just stared at her. I tried to come up with some way that this mare had offended me. Maybe besides the fact that a version of her had become minty and that I didn't like Pinkie Pie having a place in her heart reserved for a long gone friend I could never meet. But if she really branched off before she even became minty, before minty became twilight, she was her own person. I wasn't going to lump her together with who she could have been. We were ponies, I'll admit. The unknown scared us. Came with being a her species. But once it became known, we'd make friends with just about anything, and we were proud of it. Even under Discord's chaos, we ponies stayed kind and helpful instead of becoming survivalist thugs. Thanks. Maybe we can be. More the merrier, as Pinky says. But related to all of us, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a way you're related to Spike. I grinned. He's an adopted member of my family. Say what? Twilight Sparkle's family is part of mine. You heard of Clover the Clover? Who hasn't heard of her? Even my namesake is more remembered than me. She sighed, in that resigned, offhand way that reminded me of Trixie's being overshadowed. But she's an ancestor of Twilight Sparkle, which makes Twilight my many times great-granddaughter. 
And if Clover was willing to help me a thousand years apart, I got no excuse to not help Twilight's little brother. I'm going to talk with him in a minute, actually. I just wanted to apologize to you first. I wasn't that surprised about the ancestry thing. Two thousand years and you're bound to have some legendary hero or another in your bloodline. I've got Commander Hurricane's genes in me somewhere. But, wait, wait, wait. How did Clover the Clever help you if she was born a thousand years after you? She invented a time travel spell and used it to give me a pep talk. My special talent is luck, both good and bad, and it caused some really bad things to happen to those I loved. I was about ready to give up on my special talents altogether, but she showed up right when I needed her and told me things would get better. Not all at once, and not back to the way they were, but they would get better. For me, my family, and all pony kind. So I shouldn't lose hope. I... I didn't entirely listen to her when I died, and I almost made a terrible mistake. Don't follow in my hoofsteps, Rainbow Dash. We've both seen our worlds end in despair, but clinging to that despair and refusing to believe in anyone, least of all yourself, does nothing but hurt you more. She hugged me. After a few seconds, I hugged her back. Hours later, I saw her and Spike flying overhead, smiling and laughing with each other like family. Maybe these contrived family connections aren't just massive headaches. The Scootalas had been wandering around since I re-nightmared myself, and they'd had time to notice some things. Namely, that Rarity and Twilight had disappeared at some point and not shown up with the rest of us nightmares. I hope Rarity comes back, said Red Heart Alu. Yeah, for Sweetie Belle's sake, said Sweet Alu, now the defendant of Scootaloo for the New World. Um, my Applejack said praying is a good thing to do when you want to make sure something works out, said Chiralu. Oh yeah, a few Applejacks have become religious, and Chiralus was freed by Cadence within the first 30 years. Do you have any idea how many different variations happened? A lot. Not all of them had the six of us be freed at the same time. I think Sweetheart said the current one had even become a priestess, or was given the authority of one or something. I don't know, just that she enjoyed her new job. I'm just glad these ponies don't have to worry about their happy ending being revoked by us again. And considering it was partly thanks to Rancor's interference that we lost, I guess her faith isn't entirely unfounded. Naturally, Scoots looked to me for my opinion. I mean, I guess it can't hurt, I told them. What, you think I was going to be the one to tell them Rarity was secretly spiking a costume the whole time? That their best friend would be left without a big sister? Believe me, I wish Rarity was there just as much as any of them. So, they prayed. Most to Queen Cadence, some to the princesses, a few to the universe as a whole. I think one of them even prayed to Pony Thulu. As they sat around in a loose circle, those clasped together, whispering their hopes into the universe, I noticed Raspberry watching nearby, expression unreadable. The markings on her body were pulsing softly. Something was happening. Spike flew by and must have been curious, because he landed next to her and watched the Scootaloos. I guess he must have realized what they were asking for, because his eyes looked really sad. He wanted Rarity back more than any pony. Hell, I think he'd happily go back in the suit if he could. Then, Raspberry turned to say something to him. I don't bother listening in. The two of them flew back to Carousel Boutique. They didn't follow, just flew up to a higher cloud to keep an eye on them. Razuru opened her book and directed some magic sparkles towards Spike, and an agonized roar shook the town. I dove off the cloud in an instant and zoomed straight toward them, not noticing or caring who followed me, and saw Razuru and Spike waving their limbs and shedding panicked apologies. I heard noise behind me and turned to see every pony else had followed me. I fell on Nightmares, Starlight and her gang, Zakora, Discord, and all 171,015 Scootaloos. Hell, even Fluttershy's therapist had shown up. I'll uh, skip the bit where Raz had to convince me she didn't have some secret evil agenda before an attack and some pony over a misunderstanding. Most of the crowd just rolled their eyes and laughed when it became clear it was a false alarm. The ever-loyal Scootaloo army was a bit harder to convince, but they listened to me eventually. Except for Spike Scootaloo, who insisted on sticking around just to be certain. I think that touched him more than he was willing to let on. Then Raz finally explained what was going on. You remember what I'm becoming the concept of, yes yes yes? Uh, wishes and miracles, right? Yes. I need Spike to help me with one. And why did that involve him screaming? Well, Spike scratched the back of his neck. It required a sacrifice on my part to make happen. I thought miracles, sometimes miracles require faith and willingness to move forward, despite what's needed not making sense. And no matter how benevolent the wish granter, sometimes there are twists they just can't avoid, Razaru explained, in that this is a law of nature way. That, and this, I asked Spike what he'd do to make this possible. He said there's nothing he wouldn't do. I made it clear what it didn't mean, and he still accepted. But what the hey did you do? I demanded, tired of beating around the bush. Razaru held out what looked like a light of existence. No, it was more than that. It, she had a shadow of existence as well. She was a whole soul. Remember how there's no law of conservation of souls? What Spike had to give to grant his wish, to give a miracle to thousands of praying fillies, and to give a needy child what she wanted more than anything? 
was to donate part of his own soul to give life to some pony who needs it. My eyes widened. You... you can't mean... Razaru nodded. A soul for the rarity puppet, to answer his wish for Speedy to have her rarity, and Scootaloo's prayers were the same. I shook my head. Weren't we gonna get one for her fresh from Funnel Luster anyway? Why the hell did you need to cut out part of his? I swear to Celestia, if you give me some because it had to happen bullshit, I'm calling the Scootaloo's back. Having Eclipse give my soul lobotomy hadn't exactly left me fond of school surgery. Because his soul had the memories of being this Sweetie Belle's sister. The one Sweetie's heart and mind remember, even if she never knew she is not the rarity from her own world. Spike had been her sister all this time, so a piece of his soul being converted into the new rarity soul means their bond will live on, and it will be much more natural than it would be if a light from Funnel Luster took its place. That means a part of me will be with her like she and me both want, Spike answered, dead serious. I know I'm not rarity, Rainbow, but... I loved Sweetie Belle like my own sister, and she loved me. I think you of any pony can understand why I want this, can't you? Yeah, I can. So, how exactly does this work? Think of a liver transplant. The donor's liver is cut in two, then both regenerate. Normally this wouldn't work, but that's the miracle. A piece of his soul becoming a whole being all on its own. That was my contribution. If you're not even a concept yet, how did you pull it off? Twinklish and I are the last, unfiltered, unchanged remnants of a world where sometimes you find your heart's desire just by wishing it was the core law of life. Sounds nice. It was. So, if you become a concept, what will that do? It won't cause every wish and prayer to be answered. That's what spelled the end of my world. But miracles like the one that defeated Eclipse will be a lot easier to pull off. It will introduce the very concept of miracles and wishes into the universe again. So, if a villain forces a loyal hero to make an impossible choice? If it will help more than hurt, there's a chance a miracle will give them a third option to take. A chance? If the choice is truly impossible, and if they refuse to quit, when things become impossible to do on their own, so long as they have faith good can win, I'll have the ability to help them. I'm going to be working with Avatissa to help provide the gods with more options to help answer mortals' prayers. I remember how concepts work. I remember that much from Eclipse's lectures. If you become a concept, then you'll always have been around. You might be the reason that miracle happened at all. Maybe. So, thanks. You're welcome. So, alicorns are the divine of creators. You got any ideas? What, I can't be curious? Well, I've been talking with Pandora about making a race based off Twinklewish. What else is there to say? Unfortunately, a whole lot. Let's start with the Scootaloos, who still had to decide where they belonged. 171,013 left. That's a lot of choices. Rainbow Dash, who is Scootaloo? My Scootaloo. The Scootaloo that I'd saved at the very beginning, starting all of this. Even now, it still feels like a daydream. Scoots? I thought... I thought I should tell you. I told the Green Reapers what I wanted to do. I want to become a concept. What? I don't care how long it takes me. It's what I want. Scootaloo, believe me, becoming a concept isn't just being accepted into royalty. You're giving a paradise for a job with no retirement. Razor and Starlight had given us the full terms and conditions breakdown after we agreed to build the new universe. They told me the same thing. But Rainbow, you're going to finish becoming goddess, right? I... I haven't fully decided. If you're going to, then I want to be there for you. Like how you were there for me. I wasn't there for anything else. But you were there for me, she insisted. Even after you were turned into a monster, you still had enough of a heart left to save me. I can't ever repay that. None of us can. Rainbow Dash, you could have not fought it at all. You could have just been a monster. You could have just let me worse than die, loyal to the bigger monster and no pony else. But Rainbow, you still held on to a tiny bit of the real you through all of that. I want to be at your side to help you, and to help others. And I have no pony waiting for me in paradise. But you're right here. I want to walk that road alongside you, and to look out for other ponies who just want to be the best they can be. The others already tried to talk you out of it, didn't they? One of them called me crazy for wanting it. I don't blame him. Rainbow Dash, I know we both don't like the ending, but all those years I spent helping ponies, that battle where I helped rescue ponies from Ponyville, I liked it. I enjoy helping ponies. I want to keep helping ponies. Scoots, if you go through this, you won't get a happy ending. Eventually, you lose everything that makes you a pony. Don't be fooled by them looking like ponies. They're forces of nature with more responsibility on their shoulders than you and I could possibly imagine. Applejack already told me all that. That isn't stopping you, is it? Me, huh? Always gotta follow in my hoofprints, that one. I haven't decided yet. But if Twilight has, then so will I. 
It's the only little thing I can do. Scootaloo gave me a long look, then stood straight, spread her wings, and put her hoof over her heart. I hereby do solemnly and sincerely and truly declare and affirm to the Swarm of Avalon that I will faithfully discharge the responsibilities of a protector of the Hive and the innocents who seek refuge there. I choose to place myself in harm's way so that those who cannot defend themselves are defended. Though service is a heavy cost, for the ponies of the Hive I pay it gladly. You died following through with that promise. You don't see every guard pony becoming a concept. Maybe not, but it's what I'm choosing to do. And Rainbow, the current Scootaloo? Starlight told me. She's still protecting Equestria. It's a long story. She died just like me, but she's still a protector through and through. What, she became an angel too? No, uh, after the world got saved, um, I guess death felt a lot of ponies got cheated. But one life. Nightmare Clip said that was one of the things she was going to fix. Apparently it was a wedding gift. The current rarity became an alicorn in Mary's bike. Yeah, alright, why not? It was a one-time thing since mad chaos gods aren't part of the natural order. But... Yeah, that rainbow has her scootaloo back. And her gilda. And what about Fluttershy and Pinky? Nah, they seem to be happy where they are. Didn't say much about Fluttershy, but Pinky is enjoying time with her foals. Those foals. The only things that could get away with laughing around Angry Pie. Guess two out of four ain't bad. Congrats, real rainbow. I give a start. Real rainbow? I self-corrected the thought at once. No, no, no. The Rainbow Dash who was part of that unique victory wasn't the real Rainbow Dash over all the other Rainbow Dashes, any more than the Scootaloo in front of me was the real Scootaloo over all the other Scootaloos. I've had enough arguments about my Rainbow Dashness by now. I could see they were actually taking effect. The point is, that Scootaloo used her second chance at life to keep protecting ponies just because she wanted to. I'm the same way. I want to help ponies until this world ends and another begins. She was as stubborn and determined as me. I hugged her. Alright, Scoots. Lots of luck. Wasn't sure what a concept would be, but I'm sure she'll be a great one. Three down, 171,012 to go. Of course there were going to be some repeats, and I wasn't happy with all the choices they made. But it was their choice. How could I argue with that? I know I said I wouldn't eavesdrop anymore, but I couldn't help it. I pressed my ear against the wall of the barn, for once not soundproofed by Melody. I couldn't tell who was speaking. Alright, thank you, Everypony. First of all, we can't possibly fit 11,000 extra dragons in the new world. I'm sorry, yes, I know. Some of you will have to make up reflections. Griffins, yes, we can do griffins. Breezies, no problem. Wolves, really? We'll have to run it by Rhoda Fortuna first, but sure, why not? Because she moonlights as the queen of the dire wolves, but they might not be the kind of wolves you're thinking of. <clears throat> oh, and one other important detail. Only 1% of you express any interest in becoming cults. Can we get some more volunteers? It would help so much, thank you. I pulled away, blushing. You want the full list of Scootaloo's fates? Sure. Sit down though, cause this is gonna take a bit. Aside from my scoots, 17 more decided to become concepts. They agreed to race for it, with the losers becoming the winner's angels. Good sports. 1709 decided to just accept their deaths, even if they technically never happened, and move on to the afterlife. Two were undecided for a bit, until Dr. Hooves finally showed up, and jumped at the chance to tour the universe with him. Whichever version of him showed up was with a mare I didn't know called Sapphire Hooves. I didn't stop to explain anything, just waved it off his wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff before he left again. 70 specifically asked to become earth ponies in the apple family, and another 70 became unicorns and sweetie bells. 30 each became part of Fluttershy, Pinky, and Twilight's families over the generations, and yet another 80 became part of mine. 69 decided to live new lives away from Equus and became a bunch of different aliens I've never seen before. 12,154 decided to be born as Scootaloo again in another time or place, either as part of their own lineage or just as ponies with similar names and appearances. Spitfires, Saurians, Red Hearts, and Mare Mare Squidloos were among them, wanting to be their children while keeping their names. Rhoda wasn't happy, but agreed to fudge the numbers as best she could. Seven joined to be Saddle Arabian princesses, and four joined the Nipponese royal family. Sixty joined together into 20 Chimera, never wanting to be alone again. 1698 entered Oblivion willingly, wanting to be with the shadows of those they lost, and Trophy let them keep their lights on the condition they'd respect her laws. I think they were hoping to someday reunite the shadows of their loved ones with their counterparts in the living world. 900 became various types of crystal ponies. 1007 became dragons, most wanting to bring the civilized form of dragonhood from their worlds to the new one. They were disappointed to learn that Tiamat was a unique being and not a species, and that not all Ryujin had multiple heads. Another 368 became dragon pony hybrids. 812 became griffins, having fond memories of their gilda, and one even decided to join her family. 75 more became hippogriffs. 503 became breezies, a request from Pinkie Pie that appeared to be cousins of the extinct flutter ponies guessing they're from her world. Another 499 became bat ponies like Princess Luna's guard, this time as their own tribe. 
489 elected to become changelings. 332 became Zebra of Virgusai, and 4 became Winged Mules. 8 became Minotaurs. 10,017 entered Tartarus, not as prisoners but as jailers. They looked adorable with their little horns and pitchforks. A portion of them joined the ranks of Havoc's counselors, helping souls get rid of whatever baggage got them trapped there so they could join their loved ones. Apparently an old flame of the doctors acted as their manager. 28,026 took up an offer from Red Fortuna to travel along her world lines and meet Scootaloos who had died at vital moments, either trading their lives for theirs or taking their places at World Scootaloo. They'd given their lives for Equestria once, they were ready to give them again. 531 indeed became wolves, but more like THE wolf than actual dogs. Their job was to protect reality from invaders, and those who would twist it like Eclipse, even if it meant giving up their equanity in exchange for a lifetime of duty. It was kinda awesome watching them tear apart a universe-jumping fleet of Daleks in 10 seconds flat, like a swarm of puppy-shaped piranhas. 999 became angels without dying, kinda like Raz, becoming protectors of orphans and other fools with no pony on their side. They never pledged allegiance to anyone concept, but they did get the fluffy wings. 35 wanted to be reborn as Razaru's star species, a race that would help her to bring miracles to the world. It looks kinda weird, but at least they were happy. 11 chose to become junior Grim Reapers working under Starlight. Another 60 were disappointed to learn that her friends, being deputies, couldn't take on apprentices. One begged to become the Virgus' sister of Zakora. Discord didn't see any reason not to, and Venus allowed it since Zakora's bloodline did somehow have a drop of Pegasus blood in it. 7 became Yokai under Anarchy, and 4 under Rancor. 12 asked to become angels under some nature Alicorn I'd never heard of until they were ready to move on. The Scootaloo from the Flutters Loop vowed to become Shy's angel as she reached Concepted. Until then, she was fine just being Nice's friend and confidant. The one from Spike's Loop asked to wait until Spike became a region, offering to trade her hooves for scales and become his messenger. Spike was surprised, but grateful. 26,910 chose to be the angels of whichever Scootaloos became Alicorns. Failing that, they joined one of the other concepts. 101 elected to be Merponies, which they insisted were very different from sea ponies. 3 asked to become sea ponies in the new sky ocean, on the condition that they'd be triplets. When asked why, one said that she liked singing, the second said she befriended the other ones and wanted to stay with them. And the last said that, because her sweetie belle couldn't say anymore, she wanted to be her voice. Oddly enough, when that one picked the name Star Song, Raz and Pinky both broke down crying. One chose to be an angel for Trixie, or Princess Anansi, the one from her loop. I'm glad Eclipse didn't manage to erase her like everything else. Ten, to much shock, chose to be Discord's yokai, though they promised to stop him if he ever went bad again. Nothing like a bunch of tiny, hot-headed fillies to keep you from turning evil again. Discord was stunned, but eventually agreed, though with the warning that there might be a lot of form changing when he gets bored. A hundred became Cadence's angels, serving here in the afterlife as they did in their world. And the rest, all 84,217, none of whom had anyone but themselves from their home loop. They all promised to become my angels if I became a concept. Wasn't sure how to feel about that one, but should I really be surprised? Fluttershy insisted she bring the Scootaloo from Trixie's timeline to her herself. Shy had had a big role in Trixie's world being erased. She felt Trixie being alone was largely her fault. Fluttershy, all of us did that to Trixie. Except Spack, Applejack reminded her. Yes, but I was the one who kept her separated from Scootaloo this long. I wasn't there, but Fluttershy told me everything afterward. Accompanied by a full-scale illusion, possibly helped along by Trixie herself. Fluttershy had to do a lot of pleading and puppy eyes to get to this one. Why did we think it was so important? Well... Trixie? Fluttershy asked, entering Trixie's realm. What was it like? Well, surprisingly, there weren't pictures of herself everywhere. But it was probably the single hammiest place in creation. Trixie is the concept of storytelling and dramatics. What did you expect? Oh, and you could hear every actor or actress in creation performing at the same time, and it somehow sounded like the most epic story ever. Trixie's a concept. Concepts realms are practically impossible to comprehend when you're not one yourself. Heck, they're probably confusing to any concept except the one it belongs to. And, well, there was a graveyard there. A big one. No bodies, just statues and plaques of the most detailed life story of Trixie you could remember, all written as finely as the concept of storytelling could manage. Trixie turned away from her crystal ball with a flourish. Hello, dear Fluttershy. Welcome to the grand domain of Princess Anansi! Or, if you prefer, the humble abode of Trixie Midsummer Nights. Um, hi. Uh, I... I... Shy being shy, she didn't have the best composure in the world. She was crying by the time she got to the door slash portal slash hole in the fabric of reality. You can guess what happened next now that she was looking into Trixie's eyes for the first time since she died. Trixie, I... Fluttershy sobbed. I'm so sorry, I... What a nice boy. Trixie calmly trotted over and put a huff on Fluttershy's shoulder. Fluttershy, I gave up my pettiness when I ascended. If I'd truly hated you all, I wouldn't have just scarred her. No, we still don't know how Trixie managed to do that. 
I think she knew Nightmare Eclipse never knowing how it happened would cut deeper than a wound. I don't know if she was bluffing about scarring us or not, either. Darshai lowered her head, looking down. But we destroyed your world. Everybody you knew was gone. Trixie's ears bent back. Yes, yes, you did. And Trixie would be lying if she said she hasn't spent eons cursing the nightmare for it. Or that she didn't literally sing Ding Dong the Witch is Dead when she was finally defeated. But that was her doing, not yours. But we helped her. He got a six-way rainbow blast in the face for it. But she's gone. If she doesn't apologize, no pony can. She already did, Fluttershy, as Twilight Sparkle. And Trixie forgave her. Fluttershy met her eyes. How can you forgive us? I... I can't even forgive myself. Trixie hugged Fluttershy. Because I used to be a bad guy, too. True, Trixie never did anything as evil as her, but she wasn't always the best pony. We reformed baddies have to stick together, right? That smile of Fluttershy's was more beautiful to me than you can imagine. Seeing everything through an illusion replica, remember? Thank you, Trixie. But, um, I've got a present for you. That's why I came here. Oh? Fluttershy gestured towards the gate to Trixie's realm, and that's that Scootaloo. Trixie gasped. No, she didn't ask as that, because within her own realm, she could detect every detail of Scootaloo's soul. She'd know if it was a fake. You're not alone anymore. Trixie cried and hugged Scootaloo. No, they'd never met when their world existed. But how would you react if you met one of three survivors of your entire universe and they were a hero who wanted to be with you? Like you wouldn't bawl your eyes out like a baby. When a Fluttershy left, there was one fewer stone in the graveyard. One of three? Heh, <laughs> you noticed. Yeah, while well, I was taking Scootaloo as my reward for stopping Trixie, Shy was busy saving something else. Did you know even in the good old days, there were tons of changelings all over Equestria who just wanted to live in peace? You did? Cool. Well, some would copy a pony they liked the look of, change the colors of a species, and move somewhere they wouldn't be noticed. So I never thought much of the Pegasus Lyra Shy saved. She was in charge of the puppets, not me. Except this one's home was on the very edge of the pocket world, just outside the boundaries. I was so wrapped up in my own problems, I didn't bother checking in with every pony we salvaged. Don't get me wrong, I knew she was keeping something from me, but I trusted her to have a good reason. She'd earned that from me, after she worked so hard to help me keep this place a secret. Even now, after this whole mess, I still trust her. Apparently she was worried Nightmare Class would take her rage from Trixie's humiliation out on one of our non-living keepsakes. Yeah, I don't blame her for this one. Fluttershy told me on the way that there was some grift she owed for being one of the very few beings to reach out to and connect with Fluttercurl. She couldn't save him, but she could save his grandmother. And I'll admit, I cried when I saw her huddled with the other survivors, sleeping so peacefully, such a contrast to the attitude she usually carried. Gilda, I'm glad at least one of you survived. Trixie was happy to remove another grave. Rainbow Dash, from the bottom of my heart, it pains me that we must now part. Though I know not how your journey will end, I hope some day that we'll meet again. We nuzzled. Sweet dreams, Fluttershy whispered. We might see each other again, Sir Cube, maybe. But don't bet your money on it, Applejack said. Forgive my ramble, but I'll take that gamble. And Spike, when next you see dear Rarity, tell her I consider a true friend. Tell her I consider her a true friend with full sincerity. Thank you, Zakora, he said. From the dragon's truth, so it must be the truth, Zakora said calmly. Pinkie Pie, Applejack, Fluttershy, and Child, no, I do not part with feelings mild. Regardless of what strife, may we meet again in the next life. Cora gave Starlight a final hug, then lifted a sleeping orange-striped Fergusus onto her back and trotted into the gate, where she would sleep until the new world was ready. And that was that. The Scootaloos had all made their choices. Spitfire and her friends had gone asleep. We were now officially in the middle of a construction zone. Had signed the land off to the powers that be for redevelopment. Naturally, Discord now insisted on wearing a glittery pink hard hat to hammer it in. So, aren't we supposed to get ball and chain now that everything's wrapped up? I asked. Since we do still have a few zillion timeline restrictions to make up for. Starlight shook her head. I told you already, you were all insane, being led by an even more insane madmare who was almost entirely the cause and reason behind your insanity. Horse apples, Applejack snorted. I'm the one who drove Fluttershaw insane, remember? Applejack, we've been through this, I hissed. So you're the only one who led me stubborn about your sins? Applejack, it was my choice to give in, Shy whispered. It was my choice to show you such cruel truths to begin with. I could've just told not my witch face, screw you. And you've been stubborn about this sin for the last several hundred million years, Applejack, Sweetheart told her. Now you can finally do something about it, remember? Like we talked about. Applejack sighed. Sorry, I just like to take responsibility for what I've done. How is the least insane of all of us? I knew you were doing something wrong. I don't have the same excuse as y'all. 
You are taking responsibility now, Sweetheart said. You're doing, not just saying. Do you want to ask the father if he thinks you deserve Tartarus? He didn't have the guard the final say, Starlight asked. Applejack stood up straight and proper. I'll accept whatever judgment I'm given. Starlight nodded. You're also free to take anything from here you wish. These were your homes after all. And they will be again if you choose to become concepts in this reality. You're also free to make any arrangements you want before facing judgment. None of you are actually dead, so we can't force you to go anywhere with us. As she said, we were allowed to do a lot on our own. Well, okay, maybe they had invisible eyes keeping watch on us. I don't know. Berry Barbel, the one orange tree in Applejack's orchard, the one I cracked finding Pinky and Flourish I had to heal again, Applejack sent it to be with her family in reality. She didn't bother rewriting anything to plant it properly, just left Berry Barbel in a giant baby basket with a note asking the apples in the pies to take care of him. Not sure why it didn't trigger the universe's immune system, now that Eclipse wasn't there to stop it. Maybe Rarity had something to do with it? There's no way she didn't notice. Applejack trusted the apple bloom of the new reality with the rest of the orchard. And after she got back? So, Applebloom still considers you her big sister. Same way Sweetie Belle considered Spike her rarity, Razaru started. Applejack instantly knew what she was asking. I'm not her Applejack! Gosh darn it to heck, I erased her Applejack! I worse than murdered her big sister! And I would have done the same to her if Rainbow hadn't saved her! I deserve the least to be a big sister, even the tiniest sliver! I don't deserve it, and she doesn't deserve it! If you've got to use an Applejack, use the Applejack that saved the world from me! She's earned the right to guide and protect another Apple Bloom. That won't work, Applejack. Your soul has the memories of the sister she remembers, just like Spike's contained the memories that Sweetie remembered. Any other Applejack's soul would be less real to her than yours. The puppets help with other lights of existence being introduced, but in yours and Rarity's case, there was already a light filling that role. You're the only soul I can properly take memories from to give Apple Bloom the Applejack she remembers and properly answer her prayers and wishes, and those of many of the Scootaloos as well. I know you ain't doing this for any of the others. Pinky's biggest attachments aside from us were only puppets, and Fluttershy barely interacted with anyone outside of us and Flutter Nice. And Rainbow Dash? She's been given permission to serve her one mortal life as the Rainbow Dash of the New World, since her old life technically never happened. Heh <laughs> yeah, did I kinda sorta forget to mention that? No, it wasn't a bribe. I learned from Eclipse how the whole thing worked, and if slash when I chose to become a goddess myself, I asked if I could fill in for that Rainbow Dash's new life. It took a lot of begging on my part. No, it wasn't about reliving those days. Sorry, not uh forget it! Hey, hey, I didn't mean to scare you like that. I promise I didn't. I'm sorry. Look, it wasn't about me, I swear. I that Scootaloo? The Scoots of the New World? I want to be there for her too. I want to be there as a flesh and blood rainbow dash to help her along. Not just as a spirit. And I asked Scoots if she'd be okay with it. Of course she was. She wanted that too. So that's all I need to hear about that. Thanks for the hug. Right, right. Back to the story. Razaru continued. The reason I'm doing this for Apple Blue and Sweebel is because without you two, there will be a void in their hearts that a new light of existence in that role wouldn't fill properly. And I don't want that. I just fucking take the memories out of my head and give them to the new Applejack. I won't let Apple Bloom have a sinner and an abomination against creation as her big sister. Spike's got just as many sins. Do you think the new world's rarity will be tainted? Rarity, as she was in Fluttershy's Ponyville, was innocent. Um, Sweetheart spoke up, having come along for emotional support. Applejack, you, um, in a way, you're me. We have the same light. I know that, truth vision and all that. Doesn't change that my soul's blacker than tar. Razaru, could, could you take a part of my soul along with hers? Sweetheart asked. Applejack looked stunned for a moment. What? I'm a saint, literally. You think you're a sinner, so mix us and maybe my light will burn away the darkness and leave a clean, blank slate. Then Apple Bloom can have a perfectly innocent sister. The new Applejack would just have traits from both of us. Would that be okay? Applejack grumbled. Fine, just as long as she does a good job looking after Bloom. I know she will. Sweetheart touched Applejack's shoulder gently. I'm sorry if I seem forceful. You and Apple Bloom are part of my family. Mine and the first Applejacks. It's only natural I'd want to look after you both. Applejack shook her head and sighed. Let's do this, she said evenly. But one big condition. She ain't gonna be called Applejack the fifth of the fifth line. I don't care how you bend reality to make it happen. She's gonna be Applejack the sixth of the fifth line. She ain't me if she's really gonna be a mix of your spirit and mine. She's a new Applejack. Applejack's are honest, so let that truth be part of her, okay? You're asking a lot of a miracle that isn't even a concept yet, Razaru grumbled. All right, I'll do my best. I know this ain't easy, and the truth, I can see that much but it's important to me. Before I become a goddess, I want to leave some good part of me behind. 
your loving mother no matter the world line, Applejack. And so it happened. Applejack didn't scream as loud as Spike did. Sweetheart, on the other half, screamed her ghostly lungs out. But she never asked for Scootaloo to stop, or seemed to regret it. So, asked Applejack later, lying on the ground with Sweetheart recovering from soul surgery. That means my family's related to Red Hearts, yeah? Mm-hmm. Red Hearts my direct descendant, and the Apple's married under my cousin's line. Oh, and my husband invented apple bucking. So, with way too much free time on our hooves, I let myself take a look at the Rainbow Dash who saved the day with her friends. The one who had her Scootaloo and Gilda back, and whose sins were totally, 100% forgiven. Turns out she revived the Wonder Balls as their new captain, with all the blessings of Spitfire passed down through Scootaloo. And she earned back Clausdale's trust. I'd be jealous, but she's earned it. Every last bit of it. I didn't belong there, plain and simple. And she didn't deserve the weight of me merging with her just for my own selfishness. She saved her friends. I tried to damn them. She was happy, and I... Well, well, let's just say it's taken weeks of therapy just to get me to stop wishing I was in Tartarus. And leave it at that. That Rainbow Dash did everything she could to save her friends. And she won. There could only be one Rainbow Dash in this world, and she deserves a lot more than me. I hope she enjoys her happily ever after. While I may have been visiting the mortal world as effectively a ghost, I did learn one trick that had come in handy later. Silly or not, Princess Luna was still a guardian of dreams. Razuru and I approached her during her dream walks, asking for a special permission for me to have a quick visit in Sunpony's dreams. Naturally, she immediately attacked the nightmare that tried to destroy the world last time she saw me. Then after Razuru talked her down, she showed me the dreamwalking spell, with a promise to lock me in an eternal nightmare if she ever caught me abusing it. I showed up in this world's Rainbow Dash's dreams disguised as my old self, with a magic rainbow power-up I had just before I became a nightmare. We were in our Codsdale house. To my surprise, she wasn't dreaming of the old Ponyville, like I'd spent the last who knows how many eons doing but of the life she had now. She looked me up and down. First, she instinctively breaks out into a big, flattered grin. Then she asks, So, what kind of dream is this? We gonna fight? I'd rather not, I tell her. We're not gonna make out with each other, are we? Smiling wryly, I shook my head. Definitely not that kind of dream. I decided not to beat around the bush. You don't know what I would have given to be you. Part of it was incredible luck on your part, but another part was very good choices. You've avoided centuries of pain. More pain? My other self exclaims, incredulous. What kind of pain? All possible kinds. Less suffering on your part, more inflicting it on others. I inflicting My other self tensed, clearly thinking of how much pain she'd already caused this traitor dash. Trust me, I tell her. It would have gotten even worse. My victorious other self looked at me with weary suspicion. Are you planning on replacing me? To think what my response might have been even two months ago. But today, I tell her, no. In spite of all the similarities between us, I'm no doppelganger, and I'm not out to steal your life or your identity. I've got my own. My own responsibilities. Then what are you here for? My other self asks. To tell me how awesome I am? Well, then I think about it, and I grin again. Actually, yeah, that is one thing worth bringing up. You are awesome, Rainbow Dash. You've helped save the whole universe. You have lots of terrific personality traits. It's especially important you don't forget what makes Rainbow Dash such an awesome pony. Like I did, I almost say, but stop myself. As my other self puffs her chest out in hesitant pride, I tell her, but another reason, I guess, to say goodbye to the me I always wished I was. The me you get to be. The me you earned the right to be, so I can move on with my new life. Yeah, I'd talk to the concepts about living a mortal life as the new Rainbow Dash, but that world will never have Nightmare Eclipse or her endless wheel. This court's thousand years of Tartarus never happened, so the Rainbow Dash I'm going to be She'll be a fresh light, not a do-over of my old life where I can set right what once was wrong and fix my mistakes. So it still sits that she's the better cycle Rainbow Dash. I don't really understand, but I feel my other self pat me on the shoulder. Since this is a dream anyway, I'm just gonna say they're there and it's okay and then leave it at that. Pretty good plan, I tell her. Another thing, never forget how important Scootaloo was. Never forget your responsibility to her for screwing up the first time. I recognize the building look of despair all too well. Before it can threaten to take any sort of root, I add, but remember that you have a responsibility now to stay alive, for Applejack and Rarity's sake. She's called a queen labor these days, my other self mutters. Multiple names are just how things are for us immortals, I said, in my best take it from some pony who knows voice. I always thought queen labor was a bit lofty, she snickers. Wouldn't be Rarity if it wasn't. I shifted to my true form just long enough for her to almost recognize me, then turned to go. Hey, says my other self. Before you go, uh, wanna race? I couldn't resist, and I'm glad I didn't. I ended up winning that one. So that was my big goodbye to this place. It was a pretty paradise Rarity was making, but I had my own universe to look after. 
New things to look forward to. Spike apparently had the same idea while we were there. Apparently Rarity's expecting. Congrats, I guess. Hope they have healthy, weird, dragon, alicorn hybrid things. Applejack? She didn't feel like she deserved to be within a dimensional inch of the former Lyrejack, or the apple pies. She may have visited apple pie herself, but she refused to tell me anything. I will admit, she did look like she might have had one less burden on her shoulders afterward. Pinkie Pie? Fluttershy? Pinkie might have visited the apple pies. Not sure. Given she was Pinkie Pie, she might have also visited those alien ponies Razaru told her she should apologize to. Fluttershy visited Rarity in her dreams? She didn't say anything, and I didn't ask. I don't know if she decided to visit Odide either, but I think she took Flutter Nice with her somewhere one time. And in all that time, I didn't see Twilight. Not their Twilight, nor mine. Be she Alicorn or Nightmare or Unicorn. I saw neither hide nor horn of her anywhere, not once. She was talked about, but always in the past tense. I didn't see any grave for her, but she didn't have any room anywhere, and no place for her was set at any table. She was talked about as if she'd simply left. Even Trixie spoke that way. And yes, of course we reconciled over everything. I even gave her a high hoof for giving Nightmare Clips that scar, meeting Oblivion itself. Her scoots looked adorable, doing tricks above my hat with silvery magic wings and what looked like a ninja outfit. Apparently it was a Nipponese theater thing. I did find out one thing, though. Did you ever find out why the scar meant so much to me? Trixie asked. Why I made sure the final act of my life was to be the biggest pain in Nightmare Eclipse's flanks I could be. Because you had nothing to lose? No, that's just what gave me strength. And it wasn't revenge for what she was about to do to my world, though I'd be lying to say that wasn't part of it. But the real reason? If I left a mark on that witch that she could never erase, never forget. Then me and my world would still live on in some way. I didn't save my friends, but it forced her to remember them, whether she liked it or not. Tracy was as loyal to her world as I was to Scootaloo, and I respected her for that. But seriously, where the hell was Twilight? Was she a statue? Was she cured? Did she split into the bajillions of Twilight Sparkles that had made up Nightmare Clips and were now free? Had she taken a trip in the Doctor's TARDIS and was trapped in some triple antimatter bizarre dimension? Unfortunately, there wasn't exactly time for me to conduct a missing ponies investigation. The Angels had finally decided to make good on their promise. We were getting put on trial. We held off until we were sure you'd have proper therapy, explained Starlight. But now, we're confident that all of you are psychologically stable enough to be brought to court. Believe it or not, we were given a choice. You can either face judgment by the ponies of Equestria for what you've done, or we could bring you before Judicium, as originally promised. Right off the bat, we Nightmares agreed to stand together. Whatever happened to one of us would happen to all of us. No ifs, ands, or buts. We voted. I was all for being judged by the ponies of the world we'd nearly destroyed. Or at least by their rarity, since you kind of was them. Spike agreed with me on the last part, though I think he might have been a bit biased. Applejack, on the other hoof, argued that mortals were too limited in their perspectives to judge fairly and that the concepts would be the only ones capable of fully appreciating the damage we'd done, and why we'd done it. Fluttershy and Pinky agreed with her, and I was outvoted. Judician the Fair would be the one to judge us. We were escorted to the Equilibrium, that realm that was both a place and an idea at the same time, where nature's fury and nature's law were on equal terms with each other. We were again given as much time as we needed, short of near eternity, to get anything we wished in order before facing judgment and justice. I asked to speak to the two concepts I knew would have the answers I needed. I asked to see Cadence and Trixie. Where is Twilight Sparkle? I began, once we were all in the same room. My Twilight Sparkle. The Twilight Sparkle who became a part of Eclipse then got Harmony lasered six ways from Sunday. Applejack was with me, and she kept her eyes focused on them the whole time. I'd ask the others to stay behind. I'm not moving a muscle until I get the real answer. We waited long enough. Hayden seemed a bit nervous under Applejack's gaze, but Trixie wasn't phased. In fact, she seems perfectly still. So still she turned into a log and fell over, revealing the real Trixie hiding a few feet behind it. Applejack's jaw dropped. Applejack, I am the concept of trickery and illusions. You are an incomplete concept, while I am whole. I and your potential alicorn self should be counterparts who cancel each other out, but as you are still incomplete, my powers easily trump yours. Uh, hell. Darn it, I didn't think that one through. Well, Trixie, I guess you truly got your wish. There's now something you really are the best in all creation at. Be that as it may, you do deserve answers, and I have no intention of keeping them from you. The white am disappointed in you for resorting to force on a friend. Sorry, Trix. Applejack shrugged. Answers. Now. I didn't care who I was speaking to. First things first, Rainbow. Twilight believed you were all destroyed by the six sets of elements. We all did, for a while, because of how well your world was hidden. Your case didn't exactly have a lot of precedent, so when we couldn't find any trace of you, we figured the worst had happened. And she mourned you, Rainbow Dash. She wished so dearly she could apologize for what she'd done to you all. Twilight thought we were gone, better than dead. I knew the elements would bring her back to her senses, but... Twilight, I never blamed you for any of that. 
I've never thought of you and Nightmare Eclipse as the same. Or did I? I... I can't remember anymore. But we're all better again! Party time! Piggy pie, I groaned, as Pinky appeared from nowhere in a shower of confetti. Try as you might, nothing can stop the bank. Girls, there's a lot you've missed, Caden submitted. Twilight became an alicorn. I'm a chichia, concepts of magic and happy endings. Uh, do you mind showing them, Anansi? Trixie nodded, letting her horn. In a few seconds, our surroundings have been replaced with what must have been a perfect illusion of the entire universe. What is this? The multiverse, or at least our small section of it. I looked closer at one of the clusters of light and realized they were entire galaxies, rendered in perfect detail. But how... Concept of illusions, Trixie smirked. Then she indicated a few darker clusters with her hoof. Now, these black universes are those once controlled by Narathril Chot, the sower of tragedies, the herald of the grim and the dark. He's one of Discord's cousins, Gaines added, looking thoroughly done with Trixie's theatrics. One of the few that was still on friendly speaking terms with them. Like Pony Thulu? Pinkie Pie asked. Yes, but not quite for the same reason. He isn't nearly as good a cook. Now, when Twilight ascended, she naturally found herself disliking Yathos Tross' finer works, so she partnered with his antithesis, Philemon, and got to work. I watched in awe as one by one, the black universe was brightened. Twilight did all this? When Nithy pitched a fit, she tricked him into a baking contest with Princess Lesia, under the condition that if he lost, he wouldn't be allowed to interfere with universes that have already had their happy ending. He lost. Badly. Naturally, Pinkie Pie laughed at that. Classic! The funny part is, he tried cheating and still lost. Trixie grinned. I wish I could have enjoyed this as well as I should have. Look, that all sounds super cool and everything, and props to her for beating Pony Thulu's super jerk brother or whatever. But where is she now? Why was there no Twilight Sparkle in Equestria? She wasn't erased, but everybody talked about her like she was dead. But Alicorns can't die, so what the hell happened? Caden sighed. Nightmare Eclipse had gone to great lengths to tie herself into the center of her own paradox. As a result, the elements purifying her ensured the defeat of every Nightmare Eclipse in every timeline. But she herself was so tangled that she had no choice but to become one with every single one of her previous selves. The Twilight Sparkle of the current, final timeline is also the Twilight Sparkle of every timeline. I opened my mouth. But, but that's not fair! Pinkie Pie cried out. Pinkie, what's the point of even saying such a thing? I asked. Oh, if only I'd known. Trixie looked pained. You're right, it is unfair. But it was sadly the only way. Words cannot describe how much I hate those words. Couldn't she have just merged with the Twilight who became Nightmare Eclipse and let all the other Twilights she gobbled up go free? Pinkie Pie was sobbing. Some did, said Cadence. Sort of. Trixie changed her illusion again. In some timelines, Eclipse didn't fuse with the current Twilight Sparkle, and Amachikia was born as a separate entity. In others, all six of you were purified at the same time. In still others, the Sirens returned, and... In still others, the Sirens returned, and... Well, you get the point. There are many contributing factors. Then why did it happen to ours, I asked. Ah, I remember the Sirens. Eclipse was not happy about them. I'm afraid that was the consequence of her own choices. Trixie created another illusion. A memory. Please, Twilight, please! Forget about Discord! We can turn the world back the way it's supposed to be! The Grey Pony begged. Ponyville, friendship reports, our friends! In some universes, Eclipse's defeated self, purified of insanity, was willing to move forwards and change, to become Amachiti on her own, and leave the present Twilight be. But not ours. She still hung on to her core insanity. Had Twilight not fused with and destroyed her original ego, it's very likely Eclipse may have tried to reset time again. Caden sighed. It's unfortunately easy to see why. Ours was the Prime Eclipse. Prime? I asked. The Heart World Eclipse, in a manner of speaking, Trixie explained. Our eclipse was the first eclipse, the eldest possible eclipse, so it is only natural her mania and sanity was ingrained in her so deeply that even when healed she clung to it. She wanted her life back, she wanted everybody to have their life back. How is that still insane? I asked. On its own it isn't, but even healed, she was still willing to destroy the world one last time just to bring back the one she knew. Yet another genocide to throw on the pile, and that's the best case scenario. She never learned. Applejack sighed. She's rat, Rainbow. Twilight hadn't destroyed our Eclipse's ego, she'd have jumped right back down the rabbit hole again. Twilight had to absorb her to stop her for good. You know what Nightmare Eclipse was like. But Twilight, let me make one thing clear, Rainbow Dash, Trixie interrupted. The dominant persona of Nightmare Paradox was the first Nightmare Purgatory, the mare so consumed by her hunger for revenge that she willingly became a nightmare, and found revenge so addictive it became an endless obsession. Your Twilight Sparkle was in there, but you saw herself how she was broken and suppressed by the main ego. The Nightmare Eclipse the final Twilight had to destroy wasn't your Twilight. If anything, she was saved. 
How do you even know I was talking about my Twilight Sparkle? My eyes narrowed. Because I asked the elders the exact same thing about my Twilight. I forced myself not to take a step back. I kept my face perfectly blank. Kane's placed a wing on Trixie's back. So was mine, Rainbow Dash. And Pinkie Pies, and Fluttershies, and Spikes. And Mare Mares, Apple Blooms, Lyras. You've made your point, I said, keeping myself from growling. So are they just gone now? Like Pinkie Pie's friends in the world you concepts erased? No, they became a part of Amagitia, but in a different way than with Eclipse. Think of Eclipse as a parasite, controlling all the other Twilight Sparkles she forcibly merged with, or bonding with the ones who agreed with her completely. Amagitia is more of a symbiote. The Twilights became a collective whole. They should have become their own ponies! Didn't Nightmare like, Eclipse hurt them enough? How with Rainbow on this one, Applejack agreed. You think I didn't want that too, Rainbow? Trixie answered, the same anger on her fells I felt. It wasn't our choice. In the moment Twilight merged with and destroyed Eclipse Prime's persona, I could only observe. It happened within her soul, a place practically no pony could enter thanks to the sheer power radiating from her cocoon. I didn't even have a chance to stop her. Outside, I kept my poise. Inside, I flinched. She'd fought to the death for her world. Did I really think she'd just let her Twilight disappear? Okay, okay, so my Twilight is part of the one big Twilight. She thought we were super dead, so she flew off to save entire universes like the selfless hero she is. That doesn't explain where she is now. Why hasn't she come to see any of us? Why haven't you told her we're alive? Maybe she's just been really, really busy? Pinkie Pie suggested half-heartedly. Well, has she? Applejack asked. Or did she get kidnapped by Pain Eater so powerful that if we tried to rescue her ourselves it would be suicide? I kept my eyes focused on the two natures' laws. Admittedly, I focused more on Cadence since she hadn't been screwed over the same way we and Trixie had. And it's not like Trickery herself would give any tells anyway. Remember how you said there's nothing wrong with wanting Everpony's lives back to how they were, Rainbow Dash? Amachichia, Twilight, she discovered a way to accomplish that without destroying what is, Trixie explained. A way to create a parallel timeline to our Equestria, where Discord was defeated on the Day of Chaos and his reign lasted barely a day. Accomplishing this was no easy feat. You need to ask Cadence for specifics. I only know so much. Twilight was fairly close to me, but naturally far closer to her. Wait! Pinkie Pie gasped. Twilight... Twilight did it? She found a way to save Everypony? After... after everything, she really did save Everypony? Cadence nodded. Why... why didn't she look happy? 